Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So we're going to be starting to talk about something called a Turing machine variant. So a Turing machine, of course, is this state-based machine which has um, transitions, just like a normal state-based machine, but has a single tape that we can move the tape head back and forth on and change the contents of the cells. But a variant is changing the model slightly and seeing that it is equivalent to the standard model. So analogously for, uh, say, regular languages, we had DFA equal NFA because NFA is a variant of the deterministic finite automaton because it has multiple transitions of the same symbol and non-determinism and all that stuff. So Turing machine variants are similar, but we're looking at different types of changes to the machine model. So remember what the Turing machine model does is that we have this one-way infinite tape in a bunch of uh, cells, and in the cells we have certain values, such as like A, B, C, A, A, B, A, C, and then blank symbols somewhere, they could be earlier on, and we have this thing called the tape head that's looking at a certain position, and on each transition it either moves right or left one position. So the one variant I want to talk about today is something called a stay put Turing machine, which I'm going to call an STM. So the behavior of this thing is that we can uh, move left, right, or S on each transition. So what does the S here stand, uh, stand for? It means stay put. And the behavior is that it will not move to a different cell. Okay, so instead of being forced to move one cell to the right or to the left, here we're allowing ourselves to stay put. Okay, so what would this look like? On a transition, say from Q going to Q prime, we would have a transition, say we're changing an X into a Y, for example, with an S right here. So instead of an L or an R, denoting that the tape head moves left or right, here we are allowing ourselves to stay put. So it's a different type of transition we're adding to the machine model. So in order to show equivalence to the standard model or not, we would have to answer the question, actually two questions, which are that can an STM be simulated by a standard Turing machine, standard model Turing machine. So uh, by standard, I mean the one with just left and right, not with the, the state put thing. And the second question is the other one. Can a standard Turing machine be simulated by an STM, by a state put Turing machine. So it's kind of like the DFA NFA equivalence thing. If, can a DFA be simulated by an NFA and can an NFA be simulated by a DFA? So what we'll be able to show is that the answer to both is yes. So actually the second question is really, really easy. And I'll even, I'll even write the word easy on it purely because uh, what we can do is just run the machine normally. We can just copy and paste the original standard machine we're trying to simulate, and that already is a state put Turing machine. The only thing that we would want to do, for example, maybe is maybe add some transitions to, um, to Q reject if we encountered the state put thing, but the only problem with that is that the only things we need for transitions are the state itself and what is being read. This is totally irrelevant to this machine being deterministic. So uh, this is actually pretty easy. So, uh, and the answer is yes, of course. We just do whatever the original machine did. Okay, what about question uh, one? So what do we do here? So the state put Turing machine is gonna have lefts, rights, and state puts in, in some number of them. 
So if we have a, a left or right transition, we don't actually have to do anything because the normal machine can already do those. So here we can just do nothing. And of course, the, the really interesting thing is when it has the state put on the transition. So it, oops, if we have an S transition, so what do we actually do here? So let's try to observe what this transition looks like. So I already had it above, I'm just gonna uh, rewrite it down here. So we have Q going to Q prime, some, some pair of states, it could be a self loop, it doesn't really matter. So let's just say I'm changing an X to a Y and we're saying stay put on this thing. So I'm trying to simulate this thing. It, I don't have to do exactly the same behavior because it, a state, standard Turing machine can't do this, but I'm trying to emulate this in using lefts and rights. Well, if I want to end up in the same cell before and after, so whatever cell I was in in Q, I want to still be in the same cell in Q prime, and then instead of an X being there, I want a Y there this time. Well, what we can do is we can move one way and then move back. So we actually have to move right first, because if we don't move right first, we might be at the very first cell on the tape, the left-hand end, and if we try to move left, the computation stops. So what we can do is simulate this transition with two transitions, one that moves right and one that moves left. So uh, let's try to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Q going to an intermediate state. I'm going to call Q double prime. And from Q double prime, go to the original state we ended up at. So these two are the same state. This is a brand new state. I'm going to note that here. So this is brand new state. Only for this purpose. Only for breaking this up. So what we need to do here is we got to change this cell first um, because if I'm going to be moving right and then back left, then I'm not going to see the original cell to change the contents of it. So what, whatever I have to do, I have to make this changing from X to Y at the very beginning. And, I, and no matter what, I have to put an X here because I only need to be able to do this transition if I see an X anyway. So I better only be able to do this transition if I see an X. And if I see an X, I might as well just change it to a Y anyway, because I got to do that anyway. But now the question is, what do we do here? So obviously, whatever we put, we have to move left, because we got to end up at the same cell, obviously. But what we want to do is whatever we're... So actually, I'll draw it out for you. So, so this is what's happening. So we're at this cell currently, and this is the next cell along the way. So let's say that there's an X here, which allows us to do the transition, but there can be anything in this uh, second cell, let's call it a C. Then since there could be anything here, I got to be able to make sure that this cell is unchanged uh, when I, uh, before I move left. So what I, whatever this is, I got to leave it as is. So I don't know what it is, because it could be theoretically anything. So let's add a transition for every possible uh, tape character. So what I'm going to do here is something kind of interesting, which is we're going to have a bunch of transitions from here to here of the form C goes to left. So remember that when we don't have the uh, three things here, and we have only two, it says, if we see a C, write a C, and don't, so don't change the cell. And here we're going to have C goes to left for each C in the tape alphabet. So for no matter what tape character we got, we're going to uh, allow ourselves, actually force ourselves to not change that cell and move left. And so the behavior once we get to this state, will be identical to this one because we're in the same cell. We changed the cell that we wanted to change, and we didn't change any other cell because the only only other observed cell is the one we moved to the right to see, no pun intended, and we didn't change because we forced it to not change here. 
All right, so hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about Turing Machine variants down in the comments. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. I'm currently doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring if you want to uh, sign up for that. Uh, email me. It's the uh, email is down in the video description. And as always, I'll see you next time.